Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a is a real number greater than or equal to zero, and m and n are positive integers. Then the nth root of the mth root of a is equal to the m times nth root of a. Now, let's first remind ourselves the definition of the nth root of a number. Our definition is as follows. Suppose capital A is a real number greater than or equal to zero, and capital N is a positive integer. Then the capital Nth root of capital A is the unique real number x greater than or equal to zero, which has the property that x to the power of capital N is equal to capital A. Okay, now a property of positive integer exponents that we're going to be using in proving this theorem is the following. Suppose capital A is a real number and capital N and capital N are positive integers. Then capital A to the power of capital N raised to the power of capital N is equal to capital A to the power of capital N times capital N. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, let's give ourselves a real number a greater than or equal to zero and two positive integers m and n. The whole goal from here is to show that these two guys are equal. So how are we going to show that these two guys are equal? Well, let's remind ourselves from the definition we have here, the n times nth root of a is the unique real number greater than or equal to zero such that we raise it to the power of n times n, we get a. In other words, this is the only real number greater than or equal to zero, such that if we raise it to the power of n times n, we get a. Well, we're going to show that if we take this guy and raise it to the power of n times n, we also get a. And since this is unique, we must have that this guy is equal to this guy. So let's show that if we take this guy, raise it to the power of n times n, we get a. Now, I'm just going to swap these two guys around. And from the property of positive integer exponents that we have here, this guy is really equal to the nth root of the nth root of a to the power of n raised to the power of n. Right, so just like that. Now notice, inside the outermost parentheses, we have the nth root of a number to the power of n. And we expect the nth root and the power of n to cancel out. So the result should be the nth root of a. And to see how that's actually the case, let's look at our definition. We're going to take capital A to be the nth root of a. And we're going to take capital N to be n. Well, then the capital nth root of capital A is the nth root of the nth root of a. Right? This guy is the unique real number greater than or equal to zero, such that if we take this guy, raise it to the power of capital N, we get capital A. In other words, when we take this guy and raise it to the power of N, we get the nth root of A. So yeah, this guy is equal to the nth root of A. In other words, the guy that we have in the outermost parentheses is equal to the nth root of A. So this is what we get. But we also expect the nth root and the power of n to cancel out here. So we're just left with a. And to see how that's actually the case, let's apply our definition again. Well, in this case, we're going to take capital A to be a, and we're going to take capital N to be n. Well, then the capital nth root of capital A is the nth root of a, and the nth root of a is the unique real number greater than or equal to zero, such that if we take this guy, raise it to the power of capital N, we get capital A. In other words, if we take this guy, raise it to the power of M, we get A. 
So yeah, the nth root of a to the power of n is equal to a. So we have shown if we take this guy, raise it to the power of n times n, we get a. Well, remember, the n times nth root of a is the only real number greater than or equal to zero, such that if we take this guy, raise it to the power of n times n, we get a. Well, we just showed if we take this guy, raise it to the power of n times n, we also get an output value of a. Of course, this guy is greater than or equal to zero, so this guy must be the n times nth root of a. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.